I've got to introduce you guys to one more co-host. Joining us yes. today is the incredibly talented Mariel Vizcara. I've been trying to say her name all day. <laughs> <laughs> She goes, it's fine. Some people can roll their R's. Ooh. There are people that roll their R's, and there are people that don't. <laughs> you just fall in the I don't am, category. I am the don't category, big time. <laughs> All right, she's a bilingual Mexican Americana who wears who wears many hats: poet, playwright, and podcaster. She is the nice. voice behind the That Show Effed Me Up podcast. And let me tell you, she is killing it. She's in her tenth season. Is that right? Tenth season. Nice. I, yes, wow. I ju it just it was just my like birthday, the birthday of my podcast. She turned two. Happy birthday! <laughs> nice. It was August twelfth. Yes, I had a very special birthday episode. So I've been doing this podcast thing for now two years. I think I've gotten better. I went back and re-listened to some of my earlier episodes, and I was trying to be really professional. And I remember when I first started, it was just like I was pausing. Mm -hmm. every like couple of uh -huh. seconds because i thought i was messing up and now right now i could just talk for a yeah really it's just easy it becomes time. easy yeah i'm just, yes. you know it took it took us nice. a while here too it took us a minute oh yeah to kind of get out oh yeah, yeah of course i think we're still working on it you know but yeah <laughs> yeah and you can actually check out her podcast right now on pods podz network she's a, also nice. a founding member of the paletras Playwriting group. Yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a play on Paletras. words. Uh, paleta, a paleta is a lollipop, and letras translates to letters. So, pa, it's like four letters. Mm. But yeah, it's, oh. it's a play on words. Yeah. Paletas, Very cool word. Play. Four letters. Yep. All right. Mm -hmm. So, everyone, give a Thanks. warm TLS welcome to Mariel Viscara. Thank welcome you. to the Thank show. You. <laughs> <laughs> So Mary, you're gonna hang out with us for the entire show. So let's just get to know you a little bit. Um, you know, 10 season of your podcast, I'm sure there's not much that people don't know about you, but right. yes. can you tell our TLS audience anything that they couldn't go online right now on Google and find out about you? Yeah, of course. Um, around 10 years ago, I experienced a 7.2 Earth. Uh, oh, so that's wow. something that you can't. Oh I, I don't think you can Google that about me. Yeah. So it was wow. an, it was on Easter Sunday. We were all outside, you know, and then all of a sudden the Earth started shaking, and I just saw like the the electricity pole just like going back and forth. Oh wow! Uh, oh my goodness! I stood up. I feel like my reaction was to stand up from my chair where I was sitting at. I remember I was eating like cake, you know, yes. it was after eating. Um, and I stood up and my mom was like, sit back down. Like, what are you doing? Like, it was just like, <laughs> like my reaction. So yeah, I experienced a 7.2 earthquake. I'm from, I'm from the Imperial Valley. So we're used to earthquakes. So a lot of our buildings are prepared. They're all mostly made out of wood. So it's more like flexible and they like move. Uh, so there was a, okay. there was like a couple of, like there was, yeah, there was damage. Uh, there was only like two casualties, but I mean, only, but still like, <laughs> so yeah. I'm sure those two, two families weren't too happy about that, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I've actually experienced, yeah. I've experienced an earthquake too. It was weird though. I was, so I was here was a huge earthquake. and there was an earthquake here in the Washington DC area. And I felt it, but it was like very light. I mean, I was like, what is that noise? It sounded like a big truck going by. And I'm like, what is that? Okay, great. And then I ended up like the next, I think that next week I went to, um, I went to San Francisco and there was an earthquake, a big earthquake, a bigger earthquake oh in DC. Like the first one that I felt was like the beginning, but then there was a bigger one when I left, right? Okay. <laughs> And then I came back from San Francisco all the way back to D.C. And then there was an earthquake in San Francisco, a big one. I was like, wow, I'm just avoiding earthquakes. <laughs> yeah. It's you. It's you. You felt I'm the good. first one and you were like, absolutely I'm, not. I'm <laughs> I had my radar, my earthquake radar went on or something. So I was yeah. just avoiding earthquakes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mike Winters online. She he says we need to work on your Spanish, Bama. <laughs> Mike Winter picks on me all the time. Or at least the accent. <laughs> at least the accent. 
<laughs> the rolling the R's. So, Maria, how, how did you get into podcasting? Yeah, actually, um, so it all started. I had an idea a long time ago with my friend. I just wanted to start a podcast. It, and the initial idea was just like two gals talking. I even had the name for it. I created the logo. But it just never became a thing. Uh, I was actually a TM, trademark, just kidding, it's not trademark, but I, I might <laughs> use it in the future. Uh, the name is Las Coquetas, and it's basically just like Ooh. flirty gals. Uh, yeah. So I was going to do it with my friend, and then like it just fell through. I think it's also a lot of work to, you know, get together with other people yeah. that have their lives, that have that like their full-time job and stuff like that, and plan out a whole podcast. And it, it like... Is. It's yeah. really hard for me, so a little trauma dump, really hard for me to depend on other people. Uh, mm, and I always yeah. use trauma the analogy, mm -hmm. yeah, I always use the analogy that when I was in high school, I played tennis and I played singles and how I loved it because <laughs> if I had a bad day, I had a bad day and it was fine, you know, like no one is on depending yeah. on me. Yeah, it was on me, but it, with doubles, it's just like, you can't, if you have a bad day, then your partner also has a bad day, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I just, yeah. just like, I was just like, you know what, F it, I'm gonna do this thing by myself. I, it, it took like a while planning it, maybe like a year or so. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then, you know, I wanted nice. to record a couple of episodes before I even got it uh, started. So I could just, you know, have those and not have to like every week try to like hurry up to have another episode recorded. And I was like, okay, right. I know mm -hmm. what I like. I love TV shows. I love watching TV. I love immersing myself in the story. I'm just yes. good about TV shows. That Art. messed yes. me up. Like that traumatized me. That activated my fight. My, my is it fight, fight or, or flight, flight mode? Or flight. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it is. I, I always say that if a TV show isn't activated, activating my fight or flight mode, like why am I even watching? Watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Mm -hmm. like it has to Robbie is like, mm. we, we define <laughs> entertainment like differently, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, just, I think it's a great idea for a podcast. When I listen to yeah. your podcast, I mean, it's really, I mean, you, you keep me engaged and interested, and I, I just keep listening. And I'm like, okay, wow. But yeah, your, your podcast, I, the way you talk is really good too. Go, right, Johnny. No, I was actually going to ask um, what your pod, where your podcast theme was inspired. But since you said that, I wanted to know, are you going to have like guests on the show? Or would you ever think about having guests possibly kind of comment with you on certain episodes that you guys have walk, watched together? Absolutely. So usually after each season, I have a wrap up episode where I either uh, like get like a true life case or like a real life scenario that actually happened that goes in in par with what the actual show was about and i've had some uh guests come on so for the i don't know if y'all watch mayor of east town it's mm -hmm. an hbo max definitely wreck oh my god y'all want to get messed mayor up watch town. mayor of east mayor town of it's east really <laughs> kate winslet comes up and watch chess kiss um so <laughs> my I, uh, I one of my lie. friends, yeah, one of my dear friends, she is a, a teaching artist. What she does is that she goes to like jails in San Diego and she teaches like inmates theater mm. and like playwriting mm, okay. and stuff like that. But she also goes to like juvenile halls and it, it aligns with like a, one of the storylines in Mary of Easttown. So she was like, I was like, she was really interested. She really liked the show. And I'm like, come, come on as a guest and let's just talk it through. And like, I asked her questions. Like she gave me like, she kind of cool. told me that, oh, like she personally prefers going to like the actual jail with like adult inmates, than going to the juvenile halls because oh for goodness. juvenile halls, yeah. it's like mandatory. So most of like the, the kids that are there, like, you know, they're going through it. They probably yeah. don't have a good support system. You know, they've experienced like horrible amounts, amounts of trauma. And it's just like, they don't want to be there and they're obviously going to act out. Mm -hmm. But with like the adult inmates, they want to be there. They want to learn. Mm -hmm. So it's like, she's like, okay. yeah, I think she has like a wait list for her class. 
Wow. And it's like it's oh, very, wow. really cool. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. All right. So with with your show, with your podcast that show effed me up, I thought we'd chat a bit about some shows that kind of effed us up. I mean, obviously you have a whole podcast about like <laughs> all the shows that effed you up, but I figured we should probably come up with and think about like some shows that kind of mess F effed us up. So, <laughs> yeah. so let's, throw let's them start. at me. Throw them at me. So let Gianni, go ahead. why don't you start us off, Gianni? So what, what okay, show I'm effed start. you up? So I'm more of a movie girl, but I will let you know that recently you guys have most likely have heard the show. The Dahmer series. Oh, Jeffrey Dahmer? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's inspired of Jeffrey Dahmer's um, killing spree. And the reason that show effed me up, besides the obvious, was I think, I think what effed me up, besides like showing like the hands and like the parts and body parts, was kind of like the sick way he was into kind of praying and, and, and what is it, like stalking these men and getting them back to his house. Like, I know we have like a bunch of killer shows that show that or like documentaries, but the, this series did a really good job of showing it and it messed me up because now I can't trust nobody in my neighborhood. I can't yeah. trust, them. <laughs> I can't go outside without thinking that people are like watching or it's like just, just mentally, like psychologically, it messed me up. Did you do an episode so on that, Maria? On Dahmer? No, and I'll tell you why. I am a true crime junkie, so I love true crime stories. I could listen to yeah. podcasts all day about true crime. Um, I know the real case, and I was like, no, it's so messed up. I can't watch it. Like, I can't bring myself to watch mm -hmm. it because it really? makes me so angry that police <laughs> were able to to like stop him multiple times yeah. and yeah. just because he's like a white guy and he presented himself really well and because at that time like if it was like something to do with like a gay relationship or homosexuality like the police just right. looked the other way mm -hmm. so it makes me really 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 angry so i haven't gotten myself to watch it yet Gianni. <laughs> and i was like i'm not sure that i want to <laughs> Because yeah. probably, clearly it effed you up. I, you know, I started watching. I started watching like the first few episodes, but I don't know. I I wasn't feeling the 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 series, so I I think I watched maybe the first three, and then I don't know. I just okay, fair. I fair. guess because I knew the story, and I don't think it was like engaging me. Mm -hmm. I don't think the the show itself was engaging me more than. Okay. I don't yeah. know. It just it was. I don't. Know. I I didn't finish it off. So, and I don't yeah, even feel like interested him into. Him in a way, they did. They did humanize him a bit, but um, they, I mean, they, they dehumanized they, him as well. I didn't see the end, yeah. but they they also dehumanized him. But um, I don't know. I just I wasn't feeling it, so I didn't I didn't finish watching it. Mm -hmm. Did you see it, Rob? Nope. Nope. Um, I, yeah, Joe is the true crime and shows that F me up junkie in our relationship. He falls asleep <laughs> to it, and Joe. I worry. <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm you concerned know, I, for her. I, Mike Winter I'm says concerned, Evan, Evan Peters' acting was amazing. Mike Winter says yeah, Evan Peters' really acting good. was amazing. Mm -hmm. Worth the watch for sure. Yeah, he no, needs a break I, I, from I know, those traumatizing I, roles. Yeah, he, he does. does. He does. He does I, don't, do yeah. I don't know why yeah. he does that. Yeah. Yeah. I enjoyed Everything dystopian sci-fi kind of storylines. Um, so always been a big fan of uh, Twilight Zone, The Originator, and then Outer oh, Limits, no. Black Mirror, that type of stuff, because they no. present you with storylines <laughs> that really mess with your mind. They it's do. dystopian. That's scary. Um, no. Another one that I've enjoyed on Netflix is uh, Love, Death, Robots, because it just presents so many different storylines, oh, yeah. and they can be the really messed up. Yeah, just because what people can do to one another in real life is scarier than anything you can put on the screen. So, yeah, I don't know. It's yeah. just kind of, I enjoy that kind of stuff. Even yeah. Rick and Morty is one with their story arcs where it's just like, what? Really? That is like, you true. Went that, you went that deep on this? I mean, I was like, Rick and Morty. <laughs> no, no Rick I, and Morty I, is a good one. I haven't watched it completely. I think I've watched like seasons but i totally get it adventure time 
Like it's literally a kid's yep. show. The storyline. I love Adventure Time. Oh my Why god. Why do I know this show? I have I've never heard of Adventure I Time. I love it. It's a kid's show. <laughs> Oh, uh, that's why. <laughs> yeah, it's on Cartoon Network, literally. Okay, all right. I don't it's feel bad. Show. Wait, Rob, no, what did you think of the last season of uh, Black Mirror? Um, I can't say that I've watched all of them. That I haven't I've, seen um, all of it. Okay. Yeah, so I, there's just select episodes that I've seen here and there. Because, yeah, but yeah, just some like of the it, stuff that's see? presented. I like I'm an IT guy. I'm very techy. So some of the stuff that I'm watching is kind of going, okay, that's reminiscent of this. It's like, wait, this is reminiscent of China's social credits. This is mm, how Yeah, you're talking about that. Ideas can back. What was that episode? Right I know what episode you're talking about. Yeah, that. it was with Ron Howard's daughter where she just has one bad encounter at a coffee shop and people start rating her down and first she's a socialite right. and now she's just then at the end, she's like the person that she was looking down her nose to. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's that's okay. the lesson. Yeah. Okay. I, there was I recommend. Some... I, like that. Go ahead. I yeah. recommend uh, the second episode of season six. It's my favorite. And something about this last okay. season, most of the episodes were in the past. Where usually it's in the future mm. for Black Mirror. Yeah. So like it, it was really really good. Okay, yeah, I'm, I'm my wife actually, it. my wife actually binged all of the most recent episodes, and she doesn't like horror genre, which is surprising that she actually watched. Because <laughs> I was like, "You're watching Black Mirror? You don't like that?" But she was all That's into it, so and she was she was watching the most recent season, so something about the most recent season kind of resonated with her. But Jose says, "I love all horror genres, books, shows, TVs, etc." Nope. <laughs> But you guys like kind of like sci-fi horror. I, I think horror yeah, I to me is I more so like paranormal or like gory, like blood or so. That's really horror to me. Yeah. That's scary. Jacqueline Robinson says, I love horror, psychological thrillers, and true crime stories. So Absolutely. for me, <laughs> the show that effed me up, well, the first thing that came to my mind was, because uh, it was a miniseries, was the movie It. Oh my god. I watched that. I forgot how old I was. I don't even know how old I was. I know I was scared, like senseless for days, weeks. I was couldn't sleep at night. I was sick. I don't yeah. know. But I'm sure you've seen the most recent movie, right? But it was a mini series on TV and it was just it was so scary. I was like done. <laughs> I don't even I like know they had a show. I'm not a big fan of horror genre anyway, but um but that was in November of 1990, my friend. Hey, hey, hey. There's no reason to bring up dates, <laughs> nice. buddy. I mean, nice. So 1990 <laughs> was I would uh 1990 I would have been 16. Yeah, I was I was done. I was Aww. Yeah. I was So were you yeah, terrified of clowns? I was never terrified <laughs> of clowns, but I mean, just the whole well, it was you know, cuz he wasn't just a clown, Crazy. right? I mean, he was a creature that was turned into a clown or turning into a clown. So oh, he wasn't just that. a clown. But the other... Well, okay. why wouldn't you be scared of, like, Freddy Krueger or Jason X? Yeah, those that was are, crazy. I don't know. I, you know, because I watched those movies, and I, I liked those movies, actually. <laughs> I loved Freddy yeah. I used to love Freddy Krueger, and I wasn't really scared of Freddy. Oh I will take, I'll take that back. Funny. I'll take that back. I no. was scared because there were some times where I would go to sleep and be like... <laughs> having a nightmare and i'm like yeah <laughs> i want to wake up <laughs> but another show another show that that after me up was a real show was this one right here punky brewster <laughs> how how did that miss but it, the what i'm but it's, it's kind of in a good way though because i mean the show is about you know it's it's about a little orphan like similar to like annie who kind of latches onto this older retired single guy and they kind of become okay. family and you know it was a feel good show but i will yeah. tell you i used to cry <laughs> when some of the episodes uh... i like rewatched some of the episodes recently because i was like punky boost i forgot all about that show and i rewatched it <laughs> and it was Nostalgia. waterworks it was waterworks i can't <laughs> lie <laughs> I was, i'm not gonna lie yeah so, that's a good one emotionally so emotionally yeah, I, it, it kind of effed me up a little bit Wait, yeah. wait. <laughs> like when it says bless your heart scared of soleil moon fry i had a little crush on soleil moon fry i ain't gonna lie though. i did, did have a little crush when she got old especially when she got older i was like oh okay 
<laughs> anyway, all right. <laughs> so, all right, so that's uh, <laughs> that's a little bit of uh, shows that effed us up. Is yes. Up? Make sure you check out Mariel Vizcarra's podcast, that show that effed me up. Where can they find it? Other than Pods Network? Wherever you listen to podcasts, I believe. <laughs> Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, you know, maybe some other you know, streaming sites. Awesome. Your socials. Just look it up. You'll find me. Yeah. Great podcast. Nice. 